Hey guys, John here. So this is my Sequoia off-road impressions video. So I'm just gonna voice over this one because honestly, the off-road course that Toyota provided, it was fun, but it wasn't crazy hard. So the first obstacle here, guys, is a very good articulation bit. So prior to coming up to this, there's like a little bit of a hill, and then they had us put it in four low, which we really didn't need to, but just to feel the vehicle out, let it move by itself with that low end torque, which this truck does have a lot of good low end torque. But you can see with the amount that the cab is moving that the Sequoia is really lacking wheel travel. Now this is the same downfall that the Tundra TRD Pro has as compared to like a Raptor. Sequoia, I know they're two completely different things, but compared to the Bronco Raptor SUV. So those trucks are at a different tier, right? These ones are more of like a Tremor or a Ram Rebel type of status, but Toyota knows that a lot of your driving is gonna be on-road where this suspension does feel really good. But now when you come off-road, it does good for a decent amount of things, but it is lacking some wheel travel. So we were able with this first obstacle to have the rear end of the truck pretty much touching the ground every single time and with the front and the cab is moving a little bit, but the steering wheel didn't really move that much inside the cab, which was good. Now, speaking of wheel travel, this second obstacle that we had, it was kind of an obstacle where you just came up in the middle of it, and then there was an off-camber area where the front end of the vehicle starts to head down, bringing the rear end up. And you can see in this shot right here that both the Sequoia and Tundra, that rear wheel travel is just not incredible, but it still is something decent. Now with this new multi-link rear end, if you really want a lot of wheel travel out of your vehicle, upgrade the shocks, upgrade the springs, upgrade the rear trailing arm, and you got a very, very good vehicle with a lot of wheel travel. So Toyota did really open this up for a lot of the aftermarket people. They put a very good package together for a truck that 90% of the consumers won't hardcore, hardcore off-road. But for those of us that want to add extra things to the suspension system, it's, it's pretty wide open for that. The next obstacle after this, it was just an off-camber thing to where you could get the Toyota up to about 30 degrees, depending on how high up you wanted to go on this. Now, this to me, I really compared to the 4Runner because for the 4Runner, since it's a more narrow wheelbase, I'm not as comfortable being at that type of degree as I was in this Sequoia. I'm most comfortable in the Tundra just because it's a longer wheelbase and it's not as narrow as the 4Runner. But the Sequoia felt really planted at about 30 degrees. I, I didn't feel like I was really gonna roll over with it. It felt nice, it felt comfortable. I think just because that wheelbase is a lot wider and it did that one with no issue. And then they had a high speed course. High speed where they wanted us to go about 40 to 45 at max with the Sequoia. This is where the Sequoia really did well, where I really enjoyed it the most. So we slapped into manual mode. I think I was in second to third the whole time, but really revving out second in four high and the truck didn't want to shift on its own. Like if I was pegging the rev limiter with traction control off, everything off, the Sequoia didn't automatically shift into the next gear. So it was able to stay at peak torque that whole time with that iForce Max motor and just really be enjoyable on this uh, little high speed off-road course. And then there was a jump. There's this little step down that we hit just to see some good wheel travel and compression with the Sequoia. And honestly, it ate that up pretty well. <laughs> dude! Shit, dude. I think all four were off. Oh my God. That yeah. was freaking good, and that was soft, Dude, man. You gotta do that again. Holy smokes. But maybe an inch of air, which is not that much, but the rebound and how the Sequoia adjusted itself at the end, I remember being very good. It was very impressive. I didn't feel like, oh crap, I just hit a bump or a jump or landed it. It was very plush and it came back up and it was, it was very good, very impressive. Those Falcon Wild Peaks that come standard on the Sequoia, a lot of us do wish that they were 35 standard, but I understand where they're trying to still make it get good miles per gallon, I get that. But the tires held up really good, even though that they got caked up a lot when we were driving it with the mud. 
for the most part, they held up really good. The skinny pedal was our friend in that high speed off-road course, but that's just because it was very, very muddy. When I pointed the Sequoia in a certain direction, if there was a lot of mud, it tried to get to there, but the tires were just so caked up with mud, it was very hard. But when I did that trail with a Tundra when it was dry, it was, it was pretty good. And the Sequoia and Tundra, they're on the same platform, so you should have no real issues with the Sequoia if your guys are out in the West Coast and you just want to have fun with it out in the desert, drive through some dried up washes or with sand, slap it in the manual, hold that traction control button to turn it fully off, and have fun with the Sequoia. Ground clearance is an issue on it. The Sequoia is pretty low to the ground, but if you do intend on off-roading it, you're gonna raise your Sequoia up just a little bit. So that's all I got for now, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. All right, see you later.